But the other criminal, the so-called good thief, rebuked the first one by saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Who knows why he said it? Maybe he thought that under the circumstances it couldn't hurt. But Jesus, who by this point can barely lift his thorn-crowned head, responds as if he were the last true king of Israel. And says, truly I tell you, today... You will be with me in paradise. I would guess that this story didn't make it into the next day's newspaper. In the context of the sprawling Roman Empire, a few crucifixions more or less were no more newsworthy than a children's game on a school playground. It didn't matter what the sign over Jesus' head had read the day before. For a few agonizing hours, he may have been the king of Skull Hill. But now he was a corpse in a borrowed tomb. Within a few days, his life and death would pass out of the memory of the people and they would move on, looking for their Messiah in someone else. Except for this one thing. Jesus didn't stay dead. According to our best and most reliable sources, on the third day, he rose. And that changed everything. I know that some people don't believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus. Maybe you don't believe in that. It isn't consistent with our personal experience. And from a purely scientific point of view, it's impossible. But if something like resurrection hadn't happened all those years ago, do you think we would be here this morning? Do you think there would be an estimated two billion people around the globe proclaiming that Christ is Lord? Don't you think Peter, James, and John, and those others would have just moved on, shrugging their shoulders and saying, like those two disciples on the road to Emmaus, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped, past tense, but not anymore. But then something happened. Those two disciples on the road to Emmaus had an encounter with the risen Christ. And then so did Peter and James and John and all those others. The word began to get out that Jesus, who had died on the cross whose lifeless body had been laid in the tomb, was now alive again. And it was all anybody could talk about it. Fifty years later, when Luke began to write his gospel, they were still talking about it, so that Luke could take down almost word for word their recollections of what had happened. One of the stories they told was this one, about what had happened on that awful Friday when Jesus was crucified. They told how a sign had been hung over his head that said, This is the king of the Jews. At the time, it seemed like a cruel joke, a way of mocking him. But now, looking back, they could see that there was more truth in that sign than the person who hung it over his head realized. Jesus was the king of the Jews. And those religious authorities, those soldiers and the crowd who mocked him, saying, if you are a king, then save yourself. Well, he was a king. And looking back, the church could see it. And that good thief, the one who said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, who knows what he was really thinking. But I believe that Jesus was as good as his word, and that no one has ever been more surprised to stroll through the gates of paradise than that astonished thief. If you believe that Jesus was as good as his word, then you can see how this pitiful scene from Luke 23 is transformed by your faith. That derelict hanging there on the cross with that cockeyed crown of thorns on his head 
really does become the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The sign over his head reads true, and the things people are saying about him is true. Even though they mean to mock him, he is the king. You can't blame them, though, can't you? They make the assumption many of us would make that if you were a king, that you had all that power, you would use it to save yourself, wouldn't you? Most kings would but not this one. The surprising thing about Jesus is that he uses his power to save others and not himself. And let me just ask, if you could choose between a king who would use his power to save others and a king who would use his power to save himself, which one would you choose? Back in 1984, I went to the polling place to cast my vote for president. That was the year Walter Mondale was running against the incumbent, Ronald Reagan. I was 25 years old. I had just started seminary. I was out to change the world. And to tell you the truth, I hadn't paid all that much attention to the presidential campaign. As I made my way to the polling place, I had to figure out who I was going to vote for. I, I've really never been all that interested in politics and never wanted to pin all my hopes on some elected official. So I stood there in the voting booth for a long time trying to make up my mind, looking at those two names, Walter Mondale, Ronald Reagan, Walter Mondale, Ronald Reagan. Finally, I chose the third option. I wrote in a name. And the name I wrote in was my dad's. <laughs> when I told people about it later, I told them that, honestly, I couldn't think of anyone who would make a better president. No offense to those two candidates who were running, but I knew my dad. And I knew that he was good and kind and wise. And I also knew this that if push came to shove, he would lay down his life for me. And that's the kind of president you would want, isn't it? If you are a king, the religious authorities said to Jesus, then save yourself. If you are a king, the soldiers said to Jesus, then save yourself. If you are a king, the bad thief said, then save yourself. But Jesus turned out to be the kind of king who cared more about saving others than saving himself. And so he hung there on that cross beneath that sign until his work was done. I don't know what kind of king you would want, but if I could choose, I would choose a king like that. Shall we pray? King of kings, Lord of lords, thank you for what you have done for us. Thank you for being the kind of king who was more interested in saving others than saving yourself. We are eternally grateful. And we pray in your name. Amen.